When you are really sort of tired, you're, you're in what's called the pain cave. You're really uncomfortable. You're probably, you know, hot. You're hungry, you're dehydrated. Your feet hurt you. You're just, you're just sort of generally crabby. I would not wish the pain cave experience on my worst enemy. My day job as a, as a faculty member has me sort of in my head a lot. I, I, work with, I work with data, and my main area of research focus is uh, childcare and the economics of early childhood education. And through my teaching, I, you know, I, 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 th I think a lot, and, I, and I'm in my head uh, throughout throughout most of the day. So I was really looking for for a way to sort of let loose physically. I never really sort of considered myself a, a runner, uh, never mind a long distance runner. Even though there was some curiosity about whether I could do it, and I was pretty sure that I would not be able to do it. And so I focused on just going to group runs, socializing with uh, my fellow trail runners, learning about the sport and the culture of trail and, and ultra running. But I found that with each sort of successive race, um, I became more curious about the next step. It's kind of funny to sort of think about that now because a run on the shorter side would be would be a half marathon run now. The longest race I've done was, uh, it was a 91, 92 kilometer race. So this is about 55, 56 miles. And it took me over, over 13 hours. They think I'm crazy. Uh, my colleagues wonder if there's something wrong with me. My wife used to think I was crazy. I mean, to be honest with you, it is a little nuts. It takes sort of a lot of grit and, and sort of stick to itness to train for these to train for these races. You have to do your runs when it's when it's convenient and easy, and when you're feeling good, you have to do it. When it's not convenient, not easy, and your and your body's feeling kind of cruddy. And I think the thing that that sort of gets you gets you sort of through that process is. Is, is really just sort of loving the process. I think running has had a huge impact on virtually every area of my life. More than anything else, I think I've become uh, more accepting of failure. Just like in ultramarathon running, there's no assurance that you're gonna sort of get through the training block or finish the race. There's really no assurance that you will, even after spending three years or so, many months on a, on a research project, there's, there's no assurance that you're going to get a paper out of it. And there's no assurance that that, that paper, if, if you do get one, will be sort of publishable. That process in and of itself is, is very difficult, fraught with lots of road bumps and sometimes some, some failure. I, th I think that there are lots of connections between running these these difficult ultra marathon distances and doing academic work. Um, academics would make terrific ultra runners because academics really do have this sort of ability to day after day, week after week, you know, year after year, grind away on a, on a research project. There's a large component of conducting research in which you are, you are in the pain cave. When we read a paper that's sort of published or is being discussed in the, in the news, we all, I think as members of the public and as, and as researchers, have this kind of romantic view of what research looks like. I would say 90% is kind of roll up your sleeve, get your hands dirty. I think ultra runners want to, want to reserve the right to be the only ones to enter the pain cave, but, but I think researchers spend a lot, of, a lot of time in the pain cave. I mean, any time that, that you're really digging into something, whether it's physically or, or mentally, where it's sort of tough trying to figure your, your, your way around a problem. Pain Cave is a metaphor that's broadly applicable to all of us anytime we are confronted with something difficult. That metaphor works really well in sort of the trail and ultra running world, but it can be applied to our professional lives. It can be applied to our personal lives. Sometimes you will fail, but sometimes you will be successful. And the point is to just get outside your comfort zone and take a chance on something, something big. My name is Chris Herbst. I'm an associate professor in the School of Public Affairs at ASU, and I'm an ultra runner.